Stephen Fletcher, CEO of Rebalance MD. Welcome to our educational material video series presented by the new Joint Navigators. These videos will educate you on a lot of the things that you need to be ready for before surgery, the process during surgery, and most importantly, the recovery after surgery. Do your homework and you'll do well. Cheers. Hi there, I'm Lisa, the administrator for the new joint program. Once you're booked for surgery, you will receive your education package. This education package contains numerous forms and documents that are reviewed in detail throughout this video. These forms are labeled A to H to help you locate and organize them. You will receive this education package by email, mail, or by picking it up in person from Rebalance MD's reception. The new joint program will contact you to organize this. If you are watching this video prior to receiving your surgery date, good for you. You're getting a head start, but you won't have the education package yet. You will be asked to review this video again closer to your surgery date once you have received your education package. Okay, so now get your education package and a pen ready in front of you. There are several forms that you need to complete and return to your navigator by a certain date. Form A details which forms need to be returned and by what date. All right, we're almost ready to start. Get a cup of coffee and a cookie or a piece of pie or some popcorn. Remember, you can pause the video at any time to make notes or to fill in your answers. And you can rewatch sections as often as you like. Okay, that's it. We're ready to start. Here we go. Hi, I'm Giselle, New Joint Program Navigator, and I'll be leading you through Form B, My To-Do List. This list contains all the things you need to complete prior to surgery. The first item on the list is completing your pre-op exam with your family doctor. Your doctor needs to assess that you are still medically safe to proceed with surgery and fill out a specific form required by the hospital. The pre-op exam needs to be completed as soon as possible and is valid for 90 days. This form is then faxed to the hospital where you will have surgery. If you do not have a family doctor, you can go to a walk-in clinic and request a pre-op exam. If you are booked as a cancellation, this exam still needs to be completed prior to surgery. Next on the list is completing your pre-op tests. The requisitions for these tests are included in your education package. These include an x-ray of your joint and chest and will specify which hospital you can go to, an ECG of the heart and blood work. A urine test may also be required. The new joint program reviews any recent tests done at a hospital that you may have completed within three months of your surgery date. The requisitions in your education package only include those that need to be repeated. Form C is a Victoria-based hospital guide which provides you with the different department locations and hours of operation for the three different hospitals. For out-of-town patients, please contact your local hospital to find out their hours of operation. Please note that if you have surgery in Victoria, you may be required to come into town to complete the x-ray. Your x-ray requisition will state this. These tests need to be completed at an Island Health location, not Life Labs. You do not need to fast and there are no appointments necessary. You will be served on a first-come, first-served basis. Remember to bring your BC service card and prepare to pay for one to four hours of parking. Bring a good book or magazine. It is important to go for these tests as soon as possible or as directed on the requisition. This allows time for the navigator and your surgeon to review them and address any abnormalities. If you are having symptoms of a bladder infection, such as burning when urinating, foul smelling urine, urinary frequency, and pelvic pain, we advise you to contact your family doctor and have it treated and cleared up in time for surgery. 
please notify your navigator if you suspect or have been diagnosed with a bladder infection. You will need equipment to help with your daily activities after surgery. Form D is your equipment list. These are the recommended items that you will need for a successful recovery. You may not require all items depending on your situation. Most of the equipment can be rented or purchased from a local medical supply store, such as One Bracing, located at Rebalance MD. Your information booklet contains a list of places to rent or purchase medical equipment. Many of these items can be claimed on your extended health benefits if you have them. Please contact your provider to inquire about coverage. Some items may be available at local loan cupboards, but their supply might be limited. They request that you obtain equipment using your extended health benefits first, which will help free up equipment for other people in the community that do not have extended health benefits. Your residential address will determine which loan cupboard you can use. The most applicable loan cupboard, including the Canadian Red Cross or Medical Equipment Provisions Program, will be identified on Form D and it will give you directions on how to obtain the items from these loan cupboards. We suggest preparing your home and setting up the equipment in advance of your surgery and practice functioning in your environment with the limitations of your replacement surgery. Form D will also identify if you need to bring any equipment with you to the hospital. There may be items that you need to purchase. These items will be discussed in more detail as we continue through the education video. Form E is a prescription for the medical equipment that you can use when submitting to your extended health benefits claim. Please bring this prescription with you when purchasing the equipment as some medical supply stores need this to save you from paying taxes on the items. Please note that all items on Form E are recommendations made by your surgeon, but they are not mandatory. Hello, I'm Mark. I'm the bracing specialist at One Bracing, located within Rebalance MD. We're located about halfway down the hall from the main reception. We have everything you need and everything your surgeon requires for your surgery. Please come see us anytime. We have experienced staff and we have prices that are competitive with everyone else in town. Look forward to seeing you soon. All patients booked for surgery will need to have a medication review with a hospital pharmacist. You will need to bring all your medications to this appointment so that the hospital is aware of what you are currently using. This appointment will be organized by the hospital. Many patients will also need to attend an anesthetic consult where you meet with an anesthesiologist in advance of surgery. On Form B, near the bottom, it will state whether you can expect to be booked for this. If you are required to attend this appointment, you will be contacted by either the hospital or Rebalance MD. The anesthetic consult will be in Victoria, so if you live out of town, you will need to make travel arrangements. This appointment can happen anytime from weeks to days before surgery. You must be available for this appointment to proceed with surgery. Make sure all your preoperative tests are completed before your appointment. This is when you can bring all your questions regarding anesthesia, including when to stop your medication before surgery. If you are not scheduled to have an anesthetic consult, you will still meet with an anesthesiologist in the hour leading up to surgery. For further information regarding anesthesia, feel free to view our anesthetic information video on our website located on the same page as the link to this education video. As a patient waiting for your joint replacement, your role is the most important one. Through each stage, there are specific responsibilities you are required to plan for and complete to ensure the success of your recovery. Please have Forms F1 and F2 ready in front of you. These forms are called My Responsibilities. As we go through the remainder of the education video, you will need to fill in the blanks as directed. Your anticipated length of stay in hospital can be as little as one to two days. This is determined by your surgeon and whether or not you reach the discharge criteria, 
including pain control, mobility, and medical stability. We feel as though it is your advantage to be discharged as soon as possible, as patients tend to be most comfortable at home or in a nurturing environment. Hello, my name is Jenna. I'm one of three surgical bookers here at Rebalance MD. Shortly after you receive your surgical date, you will receive your surgical confirmation letter. This will come to you by way of mail or email. Please read this letter thoroughly as soon as you receive it. One week prior to your surgery, you will receive your surgical arrival time. This will come to you by way of email or by a phone call from one of our surgical bookers. Hi, I'm Julie, new joint program navigator. Prior to surgery, review your information booklet to help you prepare for surgery and recovery. Lots of valuable information to prepare your home is found under the section once your surgery day is booked. After surgery, it will be beneficial for you to have some help. You will be able to mobilize within your home when you are discharged. However, you will need help with many chores such as cooking, cleaning, laundry, grocery shopping, and driving due to decreased energy levels and pain. You will need to limit your activity. Please refer to your information booklet under the Physiotherapy Rehabilitation section. All planning must be done in advance and organized by you, as the hospital will not set up any home assistance for you. The hospital knows that you are aware of this and will discharge you once you meet the discharge criteria, even if you have not arranged help. Again, you can be discharged in as little as one to two days after surgery. If you have any questions regarding help after surgery, please feel free to contact your navigator. We can provide you with our community resource booklet that lists local respite facilities, home nursing care, transportation options, medical equipment stores, grocery stores offering delivery, and pet care. On form F1, please fill in the first blank with who will be your main source of help after surgery, such as a spouse, family member, friend, private home care, or respite facility. You will not be able to drive for several weeks following surgery. This is due to many factors. ICBC requires that your surgeon reviews and approves your ability to return to driving. The decision is based on whether you are still on narcotic pain medication and whether you can safely drive, such as having brake response time and steering wheel control. It is recommended that you make arrangements before surgery for key rides that you will require after surgery. These include a ride home from the hospital, as well as to your surgeon's follow-up appointment and physiotherapy. Depending on the type of surgery you had, your driver may need to bring equipment for you when they pick you up from the hospital. Please refer to Form D to review. If you think that you will need a Spark Pass, which is a handicap parking permit, you will need to see your family doctor regarding this. Please note that this process can take several weeks to complete. If you would like to sign up for HandyDart, your navigator can provide you the forms that you will then need to complete and return to the appropriate BC Transit location. If you are concerned about how to get in and out of your vehicle after surgery, please visit our website's surgery resources to find the link for the daily activities after surgery. On form F1, please fill in the blank space with the person who will be picking you up from the hospital. Hi, I'm Dr. Charles Nelson. We want to reduce the risk of infection to your new joint as much as possible. So ensuring that you are infection free prior to your replacement is very important. There are several ways to help reduce the risk of a post-operative infection. These include optimal blood sugar control and weight management. In particular, we want you to be infection-free at the time of surgery. There should be no open sores or wounds, and any bacterial infections such as pneumonia or urinary tract infections need to be treated. Also, good oral hygiene is important to reduce your overall infection risk. We advise that any dental work, including a cleaning, 
is done three months before surgery. If you are booked for surgery and a dental emergency occurs, please contact your surgeon's office or navigator immediately. The surgeon will then decide whether to proceed or postpone your surgery. Drinking alcohol up until your surgery date increases your chance of post-operative complications such as delirium. Delirium is an acute, temporary state of confusion and requires medical attention. It is therefore important to begin tapering alcohol consumption when you are booked for surgery to ensure that you are alcohol free for one week preoperatively. Smoking increases the risk of post-operative complications, most notably wound healing problems and infection. If you are a smoker and would like help quitting, please discuss with your surgeon or nurse navigator so that they can help connect you with resources. Rebalance MD can connect you with a free smoking cessation program to help you and support you in your efforts to quit before surgery. The following items will be useful while in hospital. Comfortable loose clothes that you can easily put on. Good walking shoes that have a covered heel or heel strap and that are closed toed. Personal items such as a toothbrush or a hairbrush. Please do not pack any scented products such as scented lotions or deodorants. Please label cases for dentures, glasses, or hearing aids. Do not bring any valuables such as jewelry as there will not be any safe place to store it. If you want to bring any electronics such as your cell phone or iPad, we recommend having someone bring it to you when you are recovering on the unit. Hi, I'm Melissa, New Joint Program Navigator. You will need to do some special washes the night before and the morning of surgery to help disinfect your skin to prepare you for entering a sterile operating room. You will receive written instruction on how to complete these washes in your surgical confirmation letter. You can purchase the chlorhexidine sponges at most pharmacies or at the One Bracing store located at Rebalance MD. A key point about these sponge washes is that you will need to do some laundry planning as everything that touches your skin after the washes needs to be clean. It is a good idea anyways to do your laundry in advance so that you don't have to worry about this chore after surgery. The night before surgery, have a regular shower. Wash your body with soap and your hair with shampoo. Once you have rinsed off, turn off the shower. Open up one chlorhexidine sponge. Lather it up and start washing your body with the body part that you will have surgery on. You will notice that there are two sides to the sponge, one with bristles and one that is a flat sponge. The bristled side is primarily for finger and toenails and thicker skinned areas. The sponge side is sufficient for the remainder of the body. Continue washing from the neck down, washing the groin areas last. You do not need to wash your face or hair with the sponge. You need to let this sit on your body for two to three minutes, so hopefully you got the bathroom hot and steamy. After, turn the shower back on and rinse off. Dry your body with a clean towel, change into clean clothes, and sleep in clean bed sheets, hence all the laundry. In the morning, hop in the shower, open up the second chlorhexidine sponge, and repeat. After you rinse, dry with a clean towel, and change into clean clothes that you are wearing to the hospital. Please do not apply any products such as lotions, powder, makeup, deodorant, aftershave, or hair products. You will also need to remove any nail polish from the fingers and toes, so now is not a good time to get a manicure or pedicure. Also, remove any jewelry prior to coming to hospital. If you have any trouble washing your back or feet, you can secure the sponge onto a long handle of sorts, such as a shoehorn with an elastic band or tie and voila, you have a long-handled sponge. On form F1, please fill in the two blank spots provided. On the first line, write night before a surgery. On the next blank line, please write morning of surgery. Hi, I'm Dr. Stone. Hip osteoarthritis is a degenerative condition whereby the joint surfaces of the hip are worn away. This results in pain and loss of function. 
Hip osteoarthritis is generally irreversible, and depending on the severity and how much it's impacting your life, a hip replacement can be a good option. Hip replacement surgery involves a surgical incision over the prominence of your hip. Various approaches are used then to get to the actual hip joint itself. Your surgeon will choose the most appropriate approach for you. The surgery itself involves removing the femoral head and neck and inserting a stem into your proximal femur and then placing a cup on the socket side. The bearing surface will vary depending on certain characteristics. Most likely it will be ceramic on a polyethylene bearing surface. When you arrive at the hospital, you will check in at patient admitting with your care card. They will guide you from there. You will see your surgeon and the anesthesiologist right before your surgery. Once your surgery is complete, you will wake up in the recovery room until your pain is under control and you are no longer drowsy. For more information, please review your information booklet under the Day of Surgery section. During your hospital stay and shortly after surgery, you will not be moving as much, which can cause a buildup of congestion to sit in the bottom of your lungs. If this congestion is not cleared, it can lead to lung complications such as pneumonia. On form F1, please fill in the next blank space with lung complications. To help clear your lungs, it is recommended that you take 10 deep breaths every hour that you are awake. Deep breathing allows air to get to the bottom of the lungs, moving and clearing the congestion. Periodic coughing after taking a deep breath also helps clear the congestion. Not only does deep breathing and coughing help your lungs recover, but it can also help with pain control and anxiety. It is important to pump your ankles up and down while in hospital at least 10 times every hour you are awake. This action helps reduce the risk of developing a blood clot in your calf. Continue doing this when you are recovering at home for the first several weeks until you are more mobile. If you are having an ankle replacement, you will not be able to do this with your operative leg. However, it's a good idea to do this with your non-operative leg, as you will be lying in bed most of the time. On form F1, please write blood clots in the blank space provided. Every patient will be prescribed a blood thinner after their surgery, and this is to help reduce the risk of developing a blood clot in your legs or your lungs. Therefore, it is important for you to take your blood thinner after surgery. Please take this medication for as long as your surgeon has prescribed. Aspirin is commonly used as a blood thinner after joint replacement. It is important to identify this as a blood thinner so that you remember to take it as prescribed and not stop when you no longer have pain. There are a few other blood thinner medications that you may be prescribed, including one that is administered as a self-injection. The nurse in the hospital will teach you how to administer it and how often. An injection technique guide will also be provided by the nurse for referencing when you are at home. Please be aware that paying for this prescription can be expensive depending on what you are prescribed. Make sure you are aware which medication is your blood thinner. There are different types of blood thinners that your surgeon may prescribe and the choice of blood thinner will depend upon medical history, surgeon preference, weight and or the presence of a previous blood clot in your legs or your lungs. An intermittent limb compression device helps reduce the risk of blood clots and decrease lower leg swelling. Apply the compression sleeves to both calves as demonstrated. Follow the manufacturer's instructions as to how to turn it on and off. It will intermittently inflate starting from the ankle and work its way upward to prevent blood and fluid pooling in the ankle and calf. The device runs on a charged battery and can last six to eight hours. You will need to attach the compression device's battery to an electrical outlet. You do not need to bring this to the hospital. You can start using it once you are discharged home. Apply the device when you are lying down for longer periods, usually for the first four to six weeks after surgery while you are on your blood thinner. You can start using it less as you increase your mobility. 
if you have a medical condition that increases your risk of developing blood clots, this device can be beneficial even after you have recovered from your surgery. You can bring it with you on long car or plane rides. This device is a recommendation by many surgeons, but it is not mandatory. It can cost a pretty penny, so if you have extended health benefits, you can check with your provider to see if they cover intermittent limb compression devices. This device is added to your prescriptions, Form E, in your package. It is also important to note that these devices are not readily available at different retailers. One bracing, located at Rebalance MD, carries them on hand and offers online purchasing. On the day you leave the hospital, you will be given a discharge sheet with information on it, such as what pain medication you've been taking in hospital and how to manage constipation. You will also be given prescriptions and will need to stop at a pharmacy on your way home from the hospital. Your physiotherapy exercises are very important after surgery. In the hospital, you will meet with a physiotherapist who will show you these exercises and discuss with you how often to do them. If you have any restrictions, your physiotherapist will let you know. Please continue with these exercises until you see the physiotherapist after surgery. Post-operative physiotherapy is free of charge at Rebalance, MD, Saanich Peninsula Hospital, and many other island health hospitals and health centers on Vancouver Island. You will discuss your options at your intake appointment with your navigator. Please contact your navigator if this changes. You may wish to continue with your own private physiotherapist. This is perfectly fine, but you will have to cover the cost. Please review the physiotherapy and rehabilitation section in your information booklet for more surgery specific information. If there are any exercises in your booklet, please read the instructions carefully to ensure that you are doing these exercises correctly. Regardless of your joint replacement surgery, your doctor will inform you when you're ready to start your physiotherapy exercises. Hi there, I'm Paula, new Joint Program Navigator. I will be walking you through a couple of topics to help with your recovery at home. Pain management after surgery is crucial to your recovery. It is important to have a plan of action, but also to have a realistic expectation that you will not be completely pain-free for at least several weeks. Let's refer to a pain scale. It goes from 0 to 10, where 0 means you have no pain at all, and 10 means that you are experiencing the worst pain imaginable. After surgery, you will need to pay attention to your pain level. If you notice that it is at a 4 out of 10, uncomfortable and just manageable, this may be a good time to take pain medication because it will take a small amount of pain medication to bring it down to a one or two. If you wait until your pain level is higher than a seven, it takes more pain medication to bring it back down to a comfortable level. This usually involves the stronger narcotics at higher doses and this can lead to other health complications such as severe drowsiness, nausea and vomiting, and breathing complications. Please refer to your information booklet for further guidance. There are two sections, pain control after surgery and pain control at home. If you have questions about your pain medications or need someone to discuss it with further, please feel free to contact your navigator. Swelling is your body's natural response to trauma and surgery is definitely that. This is simply due to your body's natural inflammatory response. Bruising may also occur, and this can in fact extend the entire length of the limb. It's perfectly normal. If your swelling is very tight, red, and hot, you should contact a healthcare professional, ideally your navigator or surgeon's office. This can be normal, but further assessment may be warranted. Please review the section swelling in your information booklet found in the after surgery portion. Whether you are using a cryotherapy machine or ice packs, icing your joint is very beneficial in reducing swelling and helping control the pain. Please review the swelling and icing section in your information booklet for specific icing information. A cryotherapy machine is composed of a container that you fill with ice and water, similar in size to a mini cooler. 
It is connected to a tube that pumps the cold water into a thin pad that is secured to your joint. You will need a lot of crushed ice or you can freeze recycled yogurt or margarine containers, creating a big chunk of ice that takes longer to melt. To avoid injury, never apply the pad directly to your skin. Always have a barrier such as a thin towel or your clothing. Also keep the pad off for at least two hours before you reapply it. We recommend familiarizing yourself with the machine before surgery. Most manufacturers have instructions provided with the cryotherapy machine or on their website. Cryotherapy machines have a great reputation for post-operative icing as they cover a larger surface and can be convenient to use with an easy on-off switch and adjustable temperature. Also, you don't have to make as many trips to the freezer as it only needs to be replenished every eight hours. Check with your extended health benefit provider to see if they cover cryotherapy machines. This item has been added to your prescriptions, Form E. Form G in your education package is your dressing guide. This form is specific to your surgeon's preference on how to manage your dressing until you see him for your follow-up appointment. Please read this thoroughly, pausing the video if you would like to do so. You will be sent home from the hospital with a dressing on your surgical site. However, you may need to change your dressing at some point before your follow-up appointment. If this is the case, you will need to purchase more dressings. If you need to change your dressing, please follow the guidelines on Form G. Our surgeons recommend two specific surgical dressings to help the incision heal well and remain infection-free. The first option is Mepilex. This is a waterproof dressing with a thick, absorbable pad that soaks up a fair amount of drainage. The second option is Aquacel AG. This dressing is also waterproof and has a highly absorbable pad. The difference between this dressing and the Mepilex is silver. Aquacel AG has silver woven into the absorbent pad. Silver is a natural antimicrobial to increase healing and prevent bacterial growth. Again, refer to Form G to identify what dressings your surgeon recommends and how many you will need. These two dressings are available at one bracing located at Rebalance MD. They are not commonly supplied at most pharmacies as they are a specialty product. These dressings cost anywhere between $20 to $60 per dressing and may be covered by extended health benefits. These dressings are not mandatory but they have shown good results for incision healing. Changes in medication, activity, and diet can cause constipation. To avoid this, drink lots of fluids, eat high fiber foods such as prunes, fruits, bran, whole grains, and vegetables. You may need to take a stool softener or laxative. You can discuss your options with your pharmacist. If you have constipation that cannot be managed, please see your family doctor or a walk-in clinic. Infection is a complication that can happen after surgery. Some signs and symptoms of an infected joint include more than one of the following. Excessive redness and heat, significant swelling, fever and or chills, significant increase in pain, significant increase in drainage. If you are experiencing these signs, please contact your navigator or surgeon's office if we are available. Your surgeon wants to manage any issues pertaining to the joint. If possible, please do not go to your family doctor unless we advise you to do so. On-call surgeons are available through the ER at both the Royal Jubilee Hospital and Victoria General Hospitals for evening and weekend emergencies. For more information about other complications that may arise, Please review complications after surgery in your information booklet. Within 72 hours of coming home, confirm or make your follow-up appointment with your surgeon's office. If it has not been arranged, make an appointment to start physiotherapy in the time frame recommended by your surgeon. Hi, my name is Jenny, navigator with the New Joint Program. Due to pain and discomfort, it is common that you may not get solid hours of sleep throughout the night.
Plan on taking naps throughout the day to catch up on sleep as it is important to your recovery. You can speak with your family doctor or pharmacist to suggest a sleep aid if you are having difficulty. After surgery, we recommend that you do not proceed with dental work or cleaning for three months following surgery. If you have a dental emergency in this time frame, please have it dealt with as soon as possible and follow your dentist's instructions on whether you need antibiotics. Notify your navigator if this is the case. If you have a dental issue that compromises your immune system, you may need antibiotics with every dental procedure for the rest of your life. Please discuss this further with your surgeon and dentist. We recommend that you stay close to home for the first six weeks after surgery as this is when complications are more likely to happen. We want you to be assessed by your surgeon if necessary. After that, traveling depends on where you are going and at what point your travel insurance covers you. Many insurance companies will not cover you for several months after a surgery, so please contact your travel insurance to find out about your coverage. Also, take into consideration what kind of equipment you may need and how comfortable you will be during your travels. One of the reasons many of you have decided to proceed with joint replacement surgery is to return to activities that you've once enjoyed. However, there may be activities that are not recommended or that need to be altered after your joint replacement. This is to get optimum longevity from your new joint and to minimize complications that may arise. Please review the outcome section in your information booklet or discuss with your surgeon at your follow-up appointment. You have now completed your education session. Please complete forms F1 and F2 signing your name at the end. Also complete the pre-hospital functional screener tool H1 and H2, as well as the consent forms I1 and I2. Review form A to make sure all forms required by your navigator are complete. Return all documents to your navigator by mail, scan and email, fax or dropping it off in person at Rebalance MD reception. If you have any questions that this video or your information booklet did not address, please contact your navigator. The Rebalance MD team wishes you all the best in your surgery and recovery.